Lunar Trailblazer is a small satellite spacecraft that has two main instruments. It has two spectrometers that are gonna be looking at different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. So we're gonna be looking at signals of sunlight that's reflected off the surface of the moon. And then we'll also be looking at the heat that's emanating from the surface of the moon. And so this small satellite will go in orbit about the moon and collect data and help us understand how water uh, exists on the lunar surface, where it exists, how much of it exists. And then we'll also be looking at different interesting geologic landing sites for uh, future exploration. The Lunar Rice team is super excited about Lunar Trailblazer because Lunar Trailblazer will carry a thermal infrared instrument that will be looking again at the heat that's coming off the surface. Uh, and this will be similar to an instrument that will be on Lunar Rice on our rover. And so we'll get really high spatial resolution from lunar orbit, looking at the Grutheis and domes, and we'll give us a sneak peek at what we're gonna be able to see with our thermal infrared camera when Lunar Vice uh, gets to the Grutheis and domes. Roughly, actually it's a good that we're sitting here. So roughly the spacecraft itself, uh, just the instruments are about the size of this instrument here sitting on the optics bench. Um, but with its solar panels, it's about the size of a bus. So the instruments are very small, but where we, you know, the solar panel arrays are, are actually much larger, but still in that sense, it's a very small spacecraft. The main goal of Lunar Trail Laser is really to study the water cycle on the moon. We, we have all this uh, remote sensing observations on the moon that suggest that water is there, but we haven't made a definitive detection of water at the surface. And so we don't really know when we talk about water, is it actual H2O uh, that's attached to different uh, minerals or is it oxygen and hydrogen in the form of hydroxyl that are just attached uh, that might come from the solar wind. We also don't know if there's maybe water ice. This has all been suggested to be there, but we haven't had definitive identifications of it. So permanently shadowed regions are actually at the north and south pole of the moon. And so when we think um, about the Earth as an example, when we're spinning on our axes, where it's actually bent. The moon isn't, it's actually pretty perpendicular. And so what that means is that there's some areas at the poles that get absolutely no sunshine. And so like there's uh, bottoms of impact craters that get no sunshine. And so because uh, they get no sunshine throughout the year, they're called permanently shadowed regions. And so they're truly the only spot on the moon that are dark. While water on the moon is certainly very exciting, I think some of the things that excite me most are actually looking at other parts of the lunar surface. And so we're gonna target key areas of geologic interest uh, to really use these new instruments to look at them in new wavelengths and in more detail. And so things like the Grutheisen domes and other areas where we see silicic volcanism we're gonna have new spectral coverage and higher spatial resolution data that will help us better understand how these silicic magmas form. And then I'm also really curious about uh, this area or areas across the lunar surface called anorthosites. And so this is the original crust of the moon that formed. Uh, and this is something that I studied as a graduate student. Um, and so we're gonna be able to study these regions of pure anorthosite across the moon which will really help us unlock and understand how the moon's crust formed. And so I'm super excited about that.